summer events, aka the pinnacle of literally every single type of live service game, including gachas, MMORPGs, you name it. And so with the release of Koharu, we are now at the doorstep of summer. Blue Archive and Nexon have dropped a teaser trailer roadmap kind of thing and today I wanted to go through it and give my thoughts on it. Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about Summer Skies Wishlist which is coming out on the 22nd of February. That's about that's about two weeks away, not too far. And thank you Elliot Ta for the subscribe. Now to start things off, let's have a look at this pre-registration over here. Essentially, what they're saying over here is that if you enter your email and sign up to their mailing list, they will give you 1.2k pyrocene, aka a nice sweet 10 pull. So I just went ahead and popped my email in there, clicked the AOS button, ticked that, and hit apply. I actually did end up getting a confirmation email in my inbox, so if you do want like some kind of assurance that you're going to be getting your 10 pulls, go check there. But otherwise, let's move down on into the event itself. There is honestly a lot going on. For this one over here, it's it's pretty much like a summary of what is about to come in terms of like the immediate event. And so as you can see, we are going to be getting a whole bunch of new characters as well as story, as well as a whole bunch of pyrocene events, the works, right? And so here, February update plans, let's start talking about the first event, Summer Sky Wishlist. So what we have here is your Summer Skies Wishlist. This is very, very much like your Izna event or your Cherino event, etc., etc. However, this one, in this event, we are able to earn Turuki swimsuit version. This is pretty cool because she actually do be kind of cute. Her base version is, a, you know, it's a little bit scary, but that is most certainly quite nice. Moving on to Azusa swimsuit, Mashiro swimsuit, and Hifumi swimsuit. In a nutshell, and I will do character evaluations for each of them, Azusa swimsuit is a fantastic debuffer. She's actually so good that she sees use outside of her natural element. And what I mean by that is that she normally has a damage type of mystic, aka blue, so think your Harana, your Izuna, but especially because of her defense down a sub skill, she is actually seeing use in like Bina, in the red raids like Hiero and of course is a mainstay in your blue raids for Shirokuro as well as Peroro. So if you are a raid enthusiast, Azusa swimsuit is a must pull, 100% non-negotiable. However, you can kind of negotiate. We'll talk about that later. You'll see why. All right, and so next we have swimsuit Mashiro who is hailed as one of the best PvP characters because she counters your girl Tsubaki. Tsubaki in PvP is certainly infamous for her like just insane amount of tank ability survivability. However, Mashiro Shiro and of course with some RNG is one of the best answers to that Tsubaki. And so if you are indeed a PvP main, Swimsuit Mashiro is probably right up your alley and she's cute as well. But honestly, to be honest, they're all freaking cute. So I don't really like, I, I get it. I get it if you roll for them for waifu's sake because they're cute or whatever. I understand that. That's what I did for Izuna. I freaking sparked her. All right. And so the last swimsuit character that we will be getting with this batch is the Hifumi swimsuit. Now swimsuit Hifumi is kind of interesting. Like she's good, but but like she's kind of just like okay. There are certainly a lot of characters in this game that kind of just like don't really, they don't really serve any purpose at all. Hifumi is just certainly not one of them. She is used in like your yellow raids, but there are just unfortunately a lot of other better in slot units. On top of that, however, Hifumi is the only student of the swimsuit series that is actually not limited. She is a permanent unit, so she will indeed go into the pool after she has left. That was actually kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if you got that. All right, and so with that said, let's move on. That's pretty exciting times. Like I've been waiting for Summer Azusa for ages and I'm hoping that I can pick up the swimsuit Mashiro as well. That would be a dream, but I freaking spark Koharu. I don't want to think about it yet. All right, so next we have a couple of characters, but also some updates to the systems themselves. First, let's talk about Hina swimsuit. So Hina swimsuit will predominantly see use in like your red raids, but mostly in Kaiten. And I do know that unfortunately, we have not had the pleasure of fighting Kaiten yet. So it's a little bit hard to visualize, but just take my word for it, Swimsuit Hina is very good for that raid. After that, we have Swimsuit Iori over here, who also is actually really, really good for Kaiten. However, Swimsuit Iori, Swimsuit Izumi, Swimsuit Hina, like they are all actually fantastic for Kaiten. And I feel like I've said that like three times now, but I would honestly classify them as like, they're not 100% required for meta. That said though, they are limited. So you're gonna have to wait a whole year before you can like actually acquire these girls. So honestly, my advice would be just to freaking roll for who you want because after these girls, there aren't actually like many must pulls. Like there are certainly a few if you are playing raid competitively like Natsu, Ako, Swimsuit, Azusa, 
but to be honest, like, Nexon has been showering us with gems. Just go for the swimsuit units, my guys. They are limited, they are cute. Let's go. All right, and so with that said, let's have a look at these new additions to the systems. Assistant system, total assault. And so this is actually a massive reason as to why a lot of people do end up skipping the Koharu banner. As we all know, Koharu is a permanent character. Chances are there are gonna be a lot of people in your club that own a Koharu, a juiced out Koharu. And so using this new assistant system coming in March, you can actually just go ahead and borrow the Koharu every single time you need her. I personally think it's a fantastic system because it means that even if we miss out on a couple of the meta units, we still have like some kind of comeback mechanism. All right, after that, it's mainly predominantly content updates. So level expansion from 70 to 73, and then a much needed upgrade to the commissions stage where we go from commission H up to commission I. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I am literally on zero EXP books. I have no EXP books at all. So this is certainly going to be a very welcome change, especially with the two times events always on rotation. Moving through, we are also getting the summer furniture set, which is nice, but like, you know, it's cosmetic. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I do like my cosmetics. And then our March update is going to finish off with a lesson for the Trinity Academy. Not too much to be said about these guys. It's all just fantastic updates. So with that being said, let's move on to the mini game. So here we have the Prefect Team's grueling summer bootcamp training begins, featuring your swimsuit Iori. Mint. I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't know too much about this. I only know that these ones over here, Colorful Beach and Summer Bounce. These are kind of like your OSTs, new songs composed by these people. And this is just gonna be a cute little mini game. I suspect it might be a web event, I'm not sure. And if anyone does know it, let us know down in the comments below. And so with that, let's move on to April where we are going to see some more alts for our existing cast. So first off, we have Shiroko Cycling, Shun Small, Saya Casual and Kirino. So for Shiroko Cycling, as well as Shun small version, they are actually good. They're not great, but they're actually good. And I say this in the context of raids, right? Like remember, I will be going back and doing character evaluations on each of these as they come out. But combined with the fact that these are actually non-limited units, permanent units, all of them actually, it's actually quite hard to recommend rolling for the cycling Shiroko and the small Shun. As for the casual Saya, she's good. She's actually like really, really good. However, again, she is a permanent unit. And so like, if you're gonna skip Koharu, you might as well skip these units like casual Saya. I think that for me personally, like these swimsuit units or Halloween units or whatever onsen units, these limited units and the bunny girls as well. I almost forgot the bunny girls. They're actually higher value because for the most part, they're cute and they're limited. And as for Kirino down here, unfortunately, she doesn't see any use, I believe, in raids. So it's not really like you're missing out on much if you don't get her here. Aside from that, however, we do have Area 15. So we are actually in February now, and we're only going to be getting Area 15 two months later. To be honest, that's kind of cool because it kind of means that we're stabilized right now with our T5 gear. And it will be stable for the next two months or so. So we can actually focus a lot of our resources on like the hard shard farming as well as like some of the other materials acquisition. So I need a lot of EXP for example and just stuff like that, right? Or you could be using the two months to actually catch up in gear, which wait, that, that kind of sounds like me as well. Anyway, that aside, we have tactical challenge season two field warfare. So this is pretty much the first time where we change the field. And so hopefully you guys should understand that changing the field or changing the terrain is actually going to impact the meta because some units actually thrive on like, for example, field and some others thrive on like indoor or urban or whatever, right? It'll be cool to see the meta change, but if I'm not wrong, I think it's still a Shun meta, which is a... Uh... All right, and so after that, we have Bounty I stage, which will be very nice considering, I don't know about you guys, but ever since I've unlocked Bounty H, I've never gotten a purple book. Kind of cringe, man. And so with this last tab over here, April main story, we are going to be getting the second half of episode 1017. Pretty cool because from what I'm being told, like the story is starting to ramp up and it starts to get a little bit, you know, a bit spicy. Unfortunately, yes, I am a story skipper, but it's not like I want to be, right? I want to read all the stories, but I am juggling like four or five gachas, which is not healthy, my guys. But I do it all for you guys. You know I do it for you. However, that is going to be the end of the video. It was, it was pretty cool. I, for one, am pretty excited as to like what is actually coming. Like I'm freaking excited for the swimsuit Azusa. And if I'm lucky enough, I might go for the swimsuit Iori, knowing that she isn't exactly top tier. So my guys, with that, let me know who you guys are holding your funds for. I know a lot of you are going for the swimsuit Hina. I know a lot of you who are also fellow swimsuit Iori enjoy it. Let me know who your funds are reserved for down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving one, I would really appreciate it because it means you watch up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. And 
And if you did like this video, then do please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl swimsuit Iori once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.